Hello and welcome back and that is right today we're returning to the subject of Plex. However we're going to mix things up a bit. This is the first part in a series of videos where rather than talking about a specific NAS and its performance in the world of NAS a number of you have requested specific Plex uh, testing to be done on individual processors because although you know some NASs have got the same CPU sometimes the turnkey ones if you're going to build your own NAS from scratch you want to know whether the specific specific processor you've got in mind is going to be any good for Plex Media Server. And this is part one. Today we're looking at the Intel N97. And although this CPU was released, as you can see, in Q1 2023, it's actually starting to roll out in a lot more affordable NAS systems and some of the DIY stuff as well. It's an Alder Lake processor there. It's quad core. It's also got integrated graphics there up to 1.2 gigahertz when needed. It's got Intel QuickSync, that sort of stuff. And in today's video, we're going to be doing our usual plex testing utilizing the n97 we're running plex in an unraid server as you can see unraid there we've had it doing some tests already in the background to warm things up we're also running on eight gig of memory which again for most of these tests is going to be pretty much the minimum at any given time don't really want to go lower than that and we are utilizing plex as a dock here you can see in a docker there we've already run it and we've already got it up and running there and we've got the n97 already filled with 1080p 4k and 8k media on the right hand side of the screen there we have got the dashboard there that's going to be telling us about the bandwidth talking about the cpu the memory utilization there and whether we're going to be using software or hardware transcoding throughout again we are going to be dipping back and forth between utilizing the windows plex client as you can see here on screen which has access to the nas on the uh, again on the lan on top of that we are going to be accessing it there in the web browser again a lot of this is so we can show different scenarios of playback and also to simulate the necessity of transcoding at times finally on the network i've got two network interfaces running right now on here we've got one network interface here at 10 gigabits per second and we have another network interface here running at 2.5 gigabits per second and as you can see on the server that we are running if we go back to the dashboard you're able to see that we're running on 2.5 gigabit ethernet there so there isn't really any network throttling we need to worry about here throughout so let's start off with some 1080p test here we'll go for something easy and as you can see here we're zooming a little bit here you're able to see this is a three megabits per second h264 so again no real compression or issues there to be uh, worried about there with licensing that's when we get into the hevc territory but if we just play something like this i know that this doesn't seem like much a 30 second file here some jellyfish knocking around but i will say this is still you know i would say only slightly lower than average 1080p current released released media in 2024 2025 we're seeing no dent there on the cpu whatsoever and again we can open it up and you can see we're playing an original quality there so if we come out of that we're going to something a bit more egregious we're going to go for a 10 megabits per second hevc or highly efficient video codec this is the licensed codec and this is where on the nas as we can see here on the right hand side if we're going to transcoder not only have i set it to make my cpu hurt but because we're utilizing a plex pass we're able to take advantage of hardware transcoding there so when we go back into the dashboard sorry about my phone there we can go ahead click play open that up we're playing an original quality there and as you can see we're playing an original there but if we go ahead and convert this and we want to convert this down to something else we can go ahead we can see it converting and you can see that hw here on the right hand side of the screen represents hardware transcoding we're taking advantage of the cpu's native integrated graphics there tiniest bump but not really anything to worry about let's scale things up and now we're going to go for something pretty heavy a 100 megabits per second and just to so we know it isn't a bandwidth problem we're going to play the original h264 again no issues no bandwidth issues as you can see we've got the bandwidth there at one gigabit we're already seeing that spike get pretty high and again a lot of this we're seeing a lot of systems that although they have 2.5 gig or even 10 gig the bandwidth jump up when it wants to can be quite heavy to put that into perspective as we go later into the testing we've got 200 and 400 megabits per second 4k files here and i'll tell you right now 
Very few of you are going to have any media of this density and weight in your collection, but that last file there is 30 seconds long and it's 1.4 gigabytes in size. That's gigabytes, not gigabits, for 30 seconds of footage. That gives you some idea of the weight we're talking about here. But let's go back to that 100 megabits per second file and play in HEVC or H.265 or Highly Efficient Video Codec. And as you can see, we've got that file there but we're seeing that slight conflict. Now this can often happen because of the web browser. It can happen due uh, memory restrictions on the local system. And let's take this opportunity while we're doing this to have a quick look at our own local performance. So if we open that up in the task manager, you're able to see here that you know Chrome alone is using quite a substantial amount of memory. But nonetheless, it's situations like this where not only do we want to test the transcoding for if we were to hit a problem, so for example, if we go back to it there, and we're going to try and play that file once again, this time we're going to try and convert it down for ourselves. So let's go ahead and automatically convert that file. We see there at the bottom the buffering, and we're seeing playback. And the impact there on the CPU, we are definitely seeing something of a spike, but not anything too egregious against what we've seen so far. Keep in mind this CPU is designed to be remarkably efficient. I believe a lot of the older lakes go as low as 0 0.8 or even 1 megahertz, uh, gigahertz, I should say, during baseline operations. It's only when they're needed to will they scale up to that rather impressive 3.6 gigahertz when needed. That's why they're rated so highly there on CPU benchmark. So heading back into Plex, we're going to take a moment here real quick to hop over to the client application. Again, we do this so we can uh, kind of control a lot of the transcoding and the necessity of conversions of that media. So if we flick over here and we go into now 4K, because we saw that slight issue there with 100 megabits per second, again, trying to isolate that as a bandwidth issue or my local or otherwise is difficult. But if we go into 120 megabits per second 4K here and we play this file, as you can see, we're playing original quality at 4K. We're seeing no difficulties whatsoever. Indeed, if we snap that to the right hand side of the screen, we're not seeing any problems there. Let's go in now to the H.265 version of that file. So let's go in at 120 megabits per second 4K and play that in 10 bit HDR. <clears throat> As you can see, running fine, running normal, no issues at all. And just before we head into the whole 8K territory, why don't we take a little look at those big old dense files we talked about. Let's start with the 200 megabits per second H.264 playing seamlessly, absolutely seamlessly. And as you can see, the Plex application is now consuming around about a gig of memory there, not too much hit there on the local CPU, and around 200 to 220 megabits per second network bandwidth being consumed there. Let's convert that down to something horrendous. So if we convert that down to 240p, which by the way is awful, we're able to see the CPU not worrying too much and ultimately running absolutely fine there. Finally, we'll go into a 400 megabits per second. This is our big boy, big boy file. This is the nightmare file. So let's play this one on the local and this is 400 megabits per second 4K output playing in original quality there. No conversions needed whatsoever. It's running like a dream. We're seeing the bandwidth there, obviously spiking notably at points. We're heating that gigabit quite noticeably there. Some kind of false network throttle there that I'm not too aware of and I'm going to have to identify. But nonetheless, we're seeing no issues there with regards to playback. And if we try that file once again, and this time introduce some fairly aggressive conversions. So let's go down to 160p, which is about eight pixels or potato quality we're able to see it's able to convert that massive file down beautifully there we're going to see that switch over to hardware transcoding shortly as we can see there hardware transcode and the cpu is still doing a damn fine job so now let's move into 8k this is our 8k test media here and for 8k this is when things get aggressive even plex itself isn't really optimized for 8k yet but let's go ahead and play our first file again if you're using the client application you are able to leverage some of the resources of your local system we're playing an original quality there and as you can see plex has leapt up to now four or just shy of four gigabytes of resource consumption on my local pc there and if we go down we're able to see original quality playback 
and the buffering although the buffering isn't quite staying ahead too much it's still doing a bang up job and the cpu has still not seen any maximums moving forward let's go into one more file here on the plex app because we know the plex client app is going to do damn well we're going to go for 8k hevc 60 frames per second hd hdr and we go for that file there open it up as we can see original quality playing like a dream we're seeing it playing fine we're seeing the cpu definitely rise up we're seeing the cpu now getting closer to the 50 percent mark and actually crossing the line here on the right hand side but we're still doing pretty darn good remember all of these tests are representative of a single connection a single multimedia file play these aren't representative of something more aggressive than that but we go ahead we play forward we can skip ahead and if we go ahead and try and convert it down again we'll go to mega potato quality is it going to be able to convert this 8k file down to mega potato quality we're able to see the cpu uh, here not too much cpu utilization locally on my client machine and less than a gig of memory being utilized there we'll pop that down but the cpu obviously hit a tremendous spike when we were trying to utilize that and it looks like the graph on this system is actually something of a mess something we're going to have to investigate later but coming out of there why don't we take a little look at going back into the web browser because the web browser here i'm not suggesting most users are ever going to enjoy their media in the web browser i'm sure someone in the comments will raise that i'm not suggesting that what i'm saying is in the web browser it's the only way we can get a kind of default baseline for everyone else because everyone uses a web browser whereas the client applications for ios for android for windows for a myriad of client devices differ in the version of uh, plex they support as well as the licenses they support uh, depending on the client hardware but if we go ahead and play a 4k file this is the one that we played earlier on remember we are now playing an 8k file in the web browser of all things and it's already gone straight into a conversion there but I don't think we're going to see playback. Now, how much of this relates to uh, the consumption of Chrome? Well, as you can see there, Chrome is already consuming 4 gig. The file is trying to be played, but I'm not going to say that we're seeing what I would call you know, effective results there. The CPU does not present as much of a limitation as I would have thought, but Plex Media Server is going absolutely cocoa for Cocoa Pops, but I don't think it's gonna be able to play this file. Again, a lot of these restrictions, no doubt are limited to the web browser, but for now, let's come out of that and try a different file. Let's play that other file that we just tried to play, and we'll play that from the beginning. We open that up again, going straight into a conversion. Not surprising, of course, when we are dealing with a web browser, but impressively, this file is being played that is a good sign that we're able to play this 8k file in the web browser of plex that is a good sign for those that are going to look at a nas powered by that n97 cpu in their nas for plex media server we're seeing this n97 by the way arriving in some nas devices you know it's for as little as 150 to 200 dollars there so this is a very promising sign for those looking at those systems for a plex media server but let's wrap things up there with the 8K file playing here in the client application for Windows and Original and the massive 400 megabits per second file being converted there in the web browser. And as you can see, the CPU is obviously going to have something of a hard time. But I do hope you found this video helpful in choosing whether a NAS powered by the Intel N97 CPU is going to be worthy of your needs. I'm going to link to a few different DIY NAS builds below as well as N97 equipped systems in order to get the job done and again thanks to uh, link plus for supplying the link station s2 uh, and now it's coming very very soon to crowdfunding for today's testing i look forward to talking more about this system in the very near future but apart from that thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time